Here I am back on the KPIs page in Vital Science for Exchange Server. I've customized the dashboard to look at two counters, active users and client RPC latency. Here I can make direct correlation between these two counters and I can easily see that as my active user spikes up, client RPC latency is also spiking. I can see that Vital Science has notified me of a number of alerts here, indicating that these values have exceeded the thresholds I've previously set, indicating abnormal server activity. I can see here that when user counts are below 250 or so, client RPC latency is quite manageable. However, as the active user count spikes up towards 500, RPC latency and thus the experience for my users also suffers. This can be a challenging problem to solve as an exchange administrator. Even if user activity is high, I still want my users to get a positive experience when using Exchange. However, I don't want to overcommit CPU and memory resources that will go unused when activity is low. Finding the right balance of resource allocation here is key. To further troubleshoot this problem, I'm going to switch to the Windows Server dashboard for this Exchange server. I am now on the KPIs page within Vital Science or Windows Server. My dashboard is customized to look at processor queue length, available memory, page faults, and percent hard page faults. But looking at the processor queue length graph, I can see that the server is seeing spikes in activity that the CPU cannot keep up with. I'm seeing that available memory is slowly declining, which isn't necessarily a problem except for I'm seeing a high number of page faults, and more importantly that many of these page faults are hard pages. The combination of these metrics is revealing that the Exchange server could use more memory to better handle these spikes in user activity. In this case, the Exchange server is a virtual machine running on Hyper-V server. To get a better idea of how memory is being allocated to this machine, we're going to switch to the Vital Signs for Hyper-V server dashboard. Here I'm looking at the virtual machine page within the Vital Signs for Hyper-V server dashboard. This will present to me all the virtual machines running on the server, as well as key performance metrics about each of those virtual machines. Here I've selected the Exchange server. I can take a look at the spikes in the guest process utilization. In the top I can take a look at the network throughput and storage put throughput as well. These values I see are, are confirming the spikes in user activity that I saw from the Exchange server dashboard. Here I can see that the Exchange server has been allocated 2 gigabytes of memory. As we saw from the Windows Server dashboard, this virtual machine definitely needs more memory to better handle those spikes in user activity. At the same time, we don't want to overcommit resource resources that will go unused when these periods of activity are low. I've switched to the Properties view, and here I can see the dynamic memory settings for this virtual machine. I can see that dynamic memory is not enabled. Dynamic memory is a new feature in Hyper-V Server that allows the virtual machine's memory to be dynamically allocated based on the workload running within it. This, is a, this feature is perfectly suited to handle the situation that we're seeing here. As user activity spikes up, Hyper-V will allocate more memory to Exchange. But when periods of activity are low, Exchange will release this memory back to Hyper-V, enabling it to be used by other virtual machines. So we're looking at the virtual machine page again. This time I've made a change to the Exchange virtual machine. Here in the properties you'll see that dynamic memory is now enabled. If I switch to the performance view, we'll see that Exchange is now using just over 5 gigs of memory. This, of course, is a lot more memory than we saw earlier with the 2 gig static allocation. But keep in mind, as the activity decreases in that Exchange virtual machine, this memory will be re-released to Hyper-V for use in other virtual machines. Now, if I switch back to the Vital Signs for Exchange Server dashboard, I can see the same active users that I saw before, but this time the client RPC latency is almost negligible. This increase in RAM has resulted in a much improved experience for my Exchange users, even through high activity, and I didn't have to overcommit resources that will go unused when this activity is low.